Welcome back to the channel. It's me, Engineer Hall. Today we're gonna talk to another conductor, Big T here. So we're gonna ask Big T some questions about the railroad and has in his time here. So as you see, we uh definitely done for the day. How many hours are over? Yeah, we overboard, so we're gonna <laughs> take time out and uh, talk to Big T here and ask some questions about the railroad. If you got any more questions for uh railroad related questions, leave it down in the comment. I try to get back to you, alright? Well, I'm looking a little rough, don't I? It's a long night. Jeez. It's a long night, ain't it? Alright, we're here with Big T. Big T, ready for these questions, man? Yeah, man. Whatever, man. Alright, cool. So, uh, down, you know, you kind of lower than me. Oh, you know, you got to get in the frame, right? You got to get in the frame. I'm in the frame. You know what I'm saying? Look, look, you know, so look, it's 544 and you know, playing on the, uh, the video, right? So, my first question, right? Is this is this a career you wanted or just a job you found? Man, I had always been dating the railroad for a long time and just <clears throat> always wanted to experience it, you know, find out what it was about, you know, just uh, <clears throat> see, you know, it's, it's interesting to me to see like all the working parts and everything, how it all fits together. So I had always been wanting to be like, you know, I grew up hanging around the railroad, you know, seeing trains go by and everything like that. And I just always wanted to, you know, see what it was. Um, it's not a job I found. I, I, I kind of, like I say, I kind of been, you know, kind of looking at it for a while. Now I just finally took the plunge. And so what took you too long to uh, make that uh, the next step? What was going on, you know? I think for me, it, it's kind of like, you're kind of like the unknown, you know, because I think it's kind of like a physical thing. It's my other thing's from the shell. Oh, uh, Abrams? Yes, sir. Oh, we'll be back at it. We'll continue that later. You know, you, you worked other, other jobs before you came to the railroad? Right. And then uh, the reason why uh, it took so long was because, like, you know, just thinking about it, like, you know, just looking at looking at what it look like it takes versus what it actually takes. You know, sometimes you psych yourself out, but I'm glad I finally stepped up and got over my fear of it. Because, you know, you look at it, it's a little bit intimidating. These engines is big and these cars are big and they, they all steal and they, you know, they, they don't... It's unforgiving. It's very you know, unforgiving. It's not a little cut. You talking about missing arms, legs? You know what I'm saying? And you hear about that type of stuff, so it's like you know, you don't you don't want to mess around. You want to be sure you sure. So get a phone call to getting here. Like, how's your process go? How's that process go? Should say. For me, <laughs> I'm kind of like I don't like surprises, so I don't like to I don't like to be surprised by a call. So like today, like uh, the previous shift that I just worked, I knew I was gonna get called before they called me. So I'm kind of like getting up and I'm getting ready. I'm getting myself prepared, like getting all my gear together, getting my lunch together and stuff like that. Um, looking at <clears throat> looking at the crew call to just kind of get a general idea of what trains are coming up and what it looks like I'm gonna end up doing. And I look at um, I look at the list, you know, stuff like that. Then my call comes in, and I'm pretty much ready to leave out the door to come to work. They give you a two-hour call. Um, they might sometimes they it's a little earlier. They might give you a two-hour, fifteen-minute, two-hour, thirty-minute. Sometimes you know, sometimes they get an early call. Sometimes it's a little later. Sometimes it's like ninety minutes. Sometimes it's like right on the button. <laughs> You never know. That that takes a little getting used to. Um, my first situation working out of Harrisburg, where when I when I lived longer a longer of a distance to get to work, that was hard because I got a two hour call window, but I lived two hours and thirty minutes away. Mm. So so was, why 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 did you take this job and you just uh, way out of range? It was because I because looking at Google Maps kept telling me, oh, no, it's an hour and 50 minutes from your house to the job. Yeah. At midnight. 
not during rush hour. So, you know, but then transferring here got a little easier. It's about a 50 minute to about an hour and 15 minute drive most most days. And uh, it got a little bit easier there. But that aside, you know, um, you get your call, you come in. Um, you, I check to see who's my engineer, what job I'm on, what assignment I got. Um, I get my bulletins uh, to see what what uh, any special orders for the route that we got to take and stuff like that. Um, meet up with the engineer, do our, do our do our job briefing, make sure that we understand what the what the work is that we have to do, and do it like that. And then uh, you know we usually head out to our to our um to our assigned location if it's if it's like you know a taxi we'll take our taxi or if it's the yard you know you go grab your engines and get the engine squared away get your cars coupled up and stuff like that uh uh you got so many different jobs that you could possibly be doing that you can't really say you know it's like if I work in the yard, then I know I'm, you know, it's a certain way I have to work. If I want a road train, it's a certain way I have to work. If it's a road switcher, it's a certain way I got, you know, it's like all different types of jobs. So you can't really categorize that into one thing. But um, uh, other than that, just get our work did. Just you get your orders and you and you go. And then while you're out there working. You uh, yeah, you, know, you briefing with your engineer all day. You know what, what, what we're going to do, how we're going to make this move. If you got you know cars, got to go here, got to go there. Customers, you got to service stuff like that. So uh, tell me, how was your first day in McDonough? How'd you felt? First day in McDonough. First day in McDonough was an experience. You know, like, drove down, got down there, got checked in the hotel and everything. And then, uh, you know, first day in the classroom was, was it was a lot of people. You know, we all in this big conference room, you know. And then, uh, you know, go out for the, for, the, for the hang test. Oh, the hang test. How was the hang test? I seen two people, well, it was, yeah. But it was mental. It was mental. I walked past the guy at the end of the table, and he was like, "He was like, I said, how was it?" He said, "Man, it's mental. He said, just don't forget to breathe." It's basically what he said. That's exactly what I did. Hanging up there, you know, the last couple of seconds, you be thinking to yourself, like, "I'm gonna let go," but <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you don't want to let go, but. Um, I think test was all right. I think two or three people got cut um, from the hang test. Uh, um, you know. Uh, morning, Jess. Hey, morning. Morning. Um, after that, getting broken down into your groups and stuff and finding out what you got to do. And, and you just I mentally prepared myself just to be there to learn, you know, just to be there to be doing what I got to do. Um, I came for the job. That's, that's all I can say about that. I came for the job. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> now, I'm you this. Um, would this be a career you would recommend to a friend? Yeah, I say anybody can try it. I mean, it's, 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 you gotta you gotta see it for yourself. Is there anything harder or easier than you thought it would be? Uh. Harder than I thought it would be. It's probably just learning all the rules and next to it. signals and it's, that was that took a little time. Easier than I thought it would be. It's is like once you out here and you realize that it's a lot of repetition to 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 like throwing switches or, or lining a route or coupling cars or doing air brake tests and stuff like that. It's like you do it every day, then it becomes easier. But once you once you start off, like when you're first starting off, 
you don't know if you're coming or going. <laughs> it's a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot harder than it seems, but at the while, it just becomes everyday life. What do you think the railroad will look like in a few years? Technology, crew size, what do you think? I think, I think with technology and, and, and like, you know, AI and stuff coming up, I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to get, I think it's going to get, it'll probably get better for crews and stuff. I don't know about crew size. I'm not really, I don't really, un- I don't really understand the, how they would, how they would change crew sizes. Cause I've heard like little bits and pieces of that type of thing. And I'm not too in tune with that. But I think that with AI, computer systems, technology, you know, especially like with the uh, MTR devices and stuff like the train reporting, uh, reporting the work and all that stuff. I think it. I think it's. I think it's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think all of those components together will probably be 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 pretty pretty interesting to see. Is there another position that you would like to eventually try, uh, like a yard master, train master, or dispatcher? Uh. I don't know. I probably try and try my hand at dispatching. It, it, I think it, I think it appeals to me, my nature of like uh, seeing how all the pieces fit together. And like, uh, you know, you got this train here, and down the line you got this train, and how they kind of you got to coordinate their movements and 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 make sure that everything runs smoothly and stuff like that. I think that would be interesting. I think that would be something that would appeal to me. So well, how many years you have in the railroad? Just one. Just one? I'm in my first year. Uh, started in February of 2023 and marked up September of 2023. And here we are in June. So coming up on my ninth month marked up. And uh, it's been... It's been a it's been a roller coaster. It's been a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any close call situations? <laughs> Plenty. Uh, you know, just like I just mentioned to you in the yard the other day was was pretty hairy, but uh, close calls. Uh, I think every day is like a close call. Head on a swivel is is like it's real. <laughs> it's real. Um, you like you could be working in this yard and you, you a certain curve or to the track and you're on one side of it and a train is on the other side. You may not hear you may not hear or see a train coming. And, you know or cars rolling by themselves. You know it's it's, it's you got to be head on a swivel. So it's safe to say that um, you definitely had to have a situational awareness and understand what's going on because it can go sideways uh, anytime. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Because it's not like you get a paper cut out here you're using limbs and you get maimed and stuff. You know what I mean? A paper cut, a paper cut would be a luxury. A luxury out here. <laughs> <laughs> a paper cut would be a luxury out here. I mean, yeah. You need you need situational awareness, and you need to be focused on what you're doing. It needs to be you need you need to have like I can remember one time I working in Enola, and uh, the guys were coming up on one track. I'm just standing off to the side of another track with my back turned, and just over the radio he says he's like, "Hey man, heads up, we're coming," and to me, it was just that quick second to hear that. I didn't even, I didn't even think to look behind me. I just thought to move. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't even think to be like, look and see what was coming. I just thought, whatever's coming, just get out of the way. <laughs> like, the first <laughs> get thing, out the way, right? First thing came to my mind: <clears throat> just get out the way. Like, don't even, don't even pause to, to, to process it or nothing. 
Now, looking at your uh, your attire, right? Now, usually you see an all lime green vest, but you have a little more color in yours. So explain what was that about? So, from what, from my understanding, when you first mark up, so you you start off in your orange. So my whole vest was orange and and the reflective color. And then when you first mark up, I mean your first two years of, of marking up, you go from the all orange to the what, what, what they call lime green, but yellow and orange to signify that you're freshly marked up and you have less than two years seniority out here on the railroad, or two years marked up as a conductor. Um, <clears throat> it's pretty much to signify that you're still brand new, new enough that, you know, people are still looking out for you. You know, a lot, that's, that's one thing about the railroad that a lot of people do. They take you under your, their wing and they kind of guide you along every step of the way. So it's like, you see this? You know, it's like, hey, I'm still, I'm still young out here, still making my way. If you see me doing something, you know, help a brother out. You know, so, but the, that's the signification of the orange and yellow vest. And then after two years, I'll just be wearing just a regular yellow vest. So, being the railroad with the time that you have been here, um, would you? tell people to apply for the railroad and uh, why? Um, if someone was looking to, you know, somebody was like on the fence trying to figure out if they wanted to try and experience the railroad, I would tell them to try it. I would tell them to try it. I would say, try it, see if you like it. You, you, you never know. I mean, there's a mm -hmm. lot of people here. There's all work, walks of life here. Um, and it's not... Some people think it's, it's a physical job. It's not. It's not all that physical, um, and it's. It's. Hey, you never know. You know, I would definitely tell people to to apply, see how you like it, see if it fits for you. Mm -hmm. Tell them about the sacrifices. Sacrifices would be, you know, uh, home time. You're probably you, you. There's a saying on the railroad that you're not paid for your time. Uh, what is it? You're not paid for your. I don't know, but <laughs> I just messed that one up. But either way, you know, you're you're paid for the your inconvenience of time. It's more so like you're you're you're, you're away from home a lot. You're um, you're gonna miss, you know, especially being on the extra board, extra list. You're gonna miss important dates. You're gonna miss birthdays, holidays. You're gonna miss, you know, cause you're on call and that phone might ring when you just now sitting down to eat. You could just be coming in to, you know, your wife or your significant other can be just coming in from work and, hey babe, and then now you gotta go to work. <laughs> so it's, it's I always say it's working all hours of the clock. I mean, you work all hours of the clock. Now, be getting at the hiring session or uh, going through the job interview process, um, was it explained up front say, hey, you're going to be going, you're going to be traveling, this is how it's going to go down? Did, did there was up front with you or it was like, uh, you'll be home every night? No, it was 100%. It was almost like, it was almost like they were trying to figure out if you were the right fit for that type of lifestyle. Like they were asking me as if like it was like, like like it depended, like it dep like the getting the job depended on me being able to <laughs> make that sacrifice, and I had already came from that lifestyle, so it was like they kind of was like oh oh you 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 know about this, and that I think that kind of edged me in, mm -hmm. but no they they make a point to tell you. And it's kind of like, they kind of wheeze you out. They're like, you know you're not going to be home, right? You know you're not going to see them, right? <laughs> you know they're going to miss you, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, they they kind of do that. But then they, it it's necessary. It's highly necessary. Because you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to get here mm -hmm. and find out. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, is, is it safe to say if, um, 
that applicant or that person that's looking for this uh, particular job needs to understand that yo, you won't be going, you're not going to be around and stuff. Um, should they even waste their time even applying or even try to go through the process? That to me is a challenge that you might be able to overcome. You never know. You you you'll have to you will have to have a serious talk with your significant other, your family. You know, you have to have a, a serious talk with them. See how it see how it works with them. You know, see how it works and try it out. And then you'll never know until you try it. Mm, That's true. What I said. How long you think you will uh, you you gonna maintain this uh, this lifestyle on the extra list? Win it. And it went all the way, baby. Yeah, for the So it is pretty much turning about we here for the money and stuff, right? We we ain't here to look around for the money, baby. The, 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 that's that's probably I mean, it's like a lot of people are here for that. Come on, who ain't here to make some good money? But then nah, it was something I wanted to say. <clears throat> no, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this is you. It's not me. It's you. I was thinking about like you know when you're young, you look at the we look at it out there and you be like, oh, it's interesting. I wonder what that's about. And then you, you know, like for me, I'll say for me, for me, it was like an interest. When I was younger, we played on the railroad tracks like every day, like. Oh what? We, where we grew up? Yeah, in was, South Philly, you go ride right a tiny was, field and see a six. Yeah, boom. Tanny Phil. Tanny Phil, yep. right? Right around right, right the road we'll track from and, the behind the uh the McDonald's to the uh to the park. Yeah. You know, and 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 playing up on the bridge, the twenty fifth street, and mm -hmm. just just and then when you you know, as you get older, you grow out of that. Just, that's not yeah, that's nothing. Just that's that's like your childhood phase. Then you get older and then you come out here now and you're looking around and you're like, Wow, it's completely different from anything you thought it was. And then, and, and and then when you get into the to, to the rhythm of doing the work, you're like, damn, we're making some good money here. Like, what a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I think for me, I kind of got in late, you know, but I feel like everything in this due time, mm -hmm. you know. I wish I could have gotten into my 20s and be set for life, but, you know, I mean, hey. You never know. You never know. I, I never know what's what's gonna happen a couple of years from now. Could could be an interesting ride. I'm just I'm just here for the ride. Well, uh, thank you for sitting down and talk to me. It's a male experience about the uh, the rebel here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know we all we is all duty now. Let's make sure we is all duty now. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know I'm really playing. Yeah.